Good morning. Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. 
I'm so glad to see you as we gather here for worship this morning. Let me mention a couple of things. First of all, this is World Communion Sunday. There are Christians all throughout the world who are celebrating this Sunday, and it reminds us of our connection beyond our local church to the church not only in our area, but around the world. And to help us celebrate communion and World Communion Sunday, we have two of our wonderful partnership congregations who are worshiping here in these buildings, and we're so glad they can be here. Casa Brazil, which is a Brazilian fellowship, a Presbyterian fellowship, and the Crossings Community Presbyterian Church, which is a Korean American uh, Presbyterian Church. Uh, their pastors normally are here. Kaman is visiting family in Korea, Rafael, the pastor of our Brazilian fellowship, also pastors a Spanish-speaking fellowship at Fairview Presbyterian Church, and they asked him first. So he's over at Fairview today. But the great thing is uh, our fellow congregations want to be here with us and be a part of this. So we are so glad that you are here, honored to have you as a part of our worship this morning. They will be leading music this morning. They will be bringing words of greeting and reading scripture. So we are grateful that you are here. And just know, I have already written the sermon and it's been translated into Portuguese and Korean. So they have copies of the sermon. So if they laugh early at my jokes, just know, you know, they're reading ahead at that point, uh, at that point. So we are glad that you are here. Let me say a welcome to the folks who are watching us online. We are glad that you are watching this service uh, whenever it is. Uh, we are celebrating communion, so if you want to get bread and juice so that you can celebrate that during our service, we encourage you to do it at this time. Thank you for your ongoing support of our church. You can do it online there with the Give Now button or mail it to the church office. And just for those of you here, we do our offering at the end of the service. We have offering plates as you leave. So we encourage you to continue to do God's work here through Johns Creek through your giving. And I want to say thank you for your generosity that's allowed us to do that. I have a few announcements to highlight, and then I'm going to invite our friends to come bring us greetings this morning from our partnership congregations. We are still collecting Souls for Souls, the gently used shoes that we're going to use, and they get sent to people who can use them to raise their families. We get money that we then use for mission. It's a great thing. I have been told that we thought today would be the last Sunday, but we actually can collect shoes until the truck comes, which may even be the first of November. So if you haven't done it yet, we can still use your gently used sh uh, shoes uh, as a way of making a difference in the world. Today's a blood drive, and here's a t-shirt. If, uh, if you give blood today, and the blood mobile's behind me in this parking lot, you not only get a t-shirt, you get a $10 gift certificate, uh, which is really cool, but it also shows how uh, serious the need is for blood at this time. So we encourage you after the service to head over there and do that. Pumpkin patch, uh, we're, we're, they've already put uh, the fences up this week, which was cool to see. Uh, Sign-ups to help. Um, there are some sign-ups out in the atrium. On the back of your bulletin, you can sign up with the QR codes. That's another way to sign up. And I know on the 16th is when the pumpkins arrive, Brian, isn't that right? So that's a wonderful way to make a difference in our community. Please help out and be a part of that. And finally, you see an insert in there. We are beginning collecting names from you for those men and women and youth you think would be good elders next year. So please fill out the insert, put it in the offering plate, mail it in. For you watching online, there is a button that you will be able to push and make um, nominations online. We want to include you and get your input in that. So we'll be doing that now and for the next three Sundays after this. Those are all of my announcements this morning. I would like to ask our friends from the uh, Crossings Community uh, Presbyterian Church and Casa Brazil who are going to come bring welcome and greetings if you would come share those at this time. <laughs> Pastor Kim um, sends his greetings. Um, as he mentioned, uh, Pastor Kim is in Korea, cannot be here uh, to attend needs of his urgent um, need of his elderly parents. On behalf of Pastor Kim and the Crossings Community Presbyterian Church, we thank Reverend 
Greg Noseworthy, the elders, the leadership team at this church, and the members of the Johns Creek Presbyterian Church for your love and continued support. Also, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to join in today in this world communion service this morning. Again, thank you so much. First, I would like to say bon dia. Bon dia is good morning. Uh, we also would like to thank uh, this amazing church. Uh, Casa Brasil has been uh, congregating in this place for around two years, and God has blessed uh, our church in many, many ways. Uh, as the pastor said, uh, our pastor, Pastor Raphael, was not able to come because he has another church where he is a pastor and he is there preaching at this moment. But we'd like to thank you and say to you guys, God bless you and bless this church uh, because this church has been a bless in our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Well, stay in I'm going to invite you now to join together in the call to worship. I'm going to do it in English, and then we're going to have a line in Portuguese and Korean. We have translations there for those of you who do not know those languages, and then I will finish in English. Let us join together in the call to worship. We gather together to ask God's blessing in this time and this place. Nós louvamos o nome do Deus Santo. We are God's people. We sing praise that we are together today as one. Friends, I invite you, if you are able, to please stand as we are led in some energetic worship music by our friends from Casa Brazil. One. Two, three, Brothers and sisters, when we gather together, we take a moment of our time in worship to remind one another that we don't always follow what God tells us to do, and we don't always refrain from doing the things that God has asked us to refrain from doing, but that God hears us, whether it's aloud or silently, and we trust in that. 
So let us take a moment of silence and confess our sins personally to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we trust that in this world and in this life that no matter what language we speak, God understands and hears our hearts. And when we turn back to God, God is running to us with open arms. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. This time I'd like to invite our young people to come down front for our children's message. You can either sit in the uh, circle here or sit on the floor. So if you'd like to come down, come on down for our children's message. So good to see all of you. Let's say what we say every Sunday morning. You know what? Why? God loves you and God loves me. I like to bring things to share with you. And this morning, I like to collect crosses. Do you know what a, you, you know what a cross is, don't you? People sometimes give me crosses. Other times uh, I buy them. And I especially like them when they come from different parts of the world. For example, a friend of mine named Barbara gave me this one. Can you see that cross? Can you see the carvings in it? Can you tell what's in there by any chance? What's carved in there? Yeah. What, what is that? On the bottom is an angel. There's an angel there at the bottom, yeah? And who's in the middle? Well, I think they're all telling the story of God, but in the middle, I think you see there's a baby there and Mary. Who do you think that is? Which baby do you think is in the manger there? Jesus, that's right, yeah. Um, 
Uh huh. That's right. You're exactly right, too. Well, this one, I think, came from Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, which is why it probably has the story of Jesus' birth in the middle. I've got others here. For example, uh, where do you, any idea where that one may have come from? This came from Australia, and the dots there reflect the art of, of some of the folks who live there, too. So that's, I think, a pretty cool-looking one. Isn't that pretty cool looking? This one, maybe you can see, any idea where this one might have come from? Where? Well, I think this one comes from Mexico. When I was in Mexico. Yeah, you can see, and you can see the beautiful picture it has there. Uh, let's see which other ones I've got. Uh, any idea where, where this one might have come from? Well, it's probably not that old. It probably doesn't go back that far, but I think it comes from either Scotland or Ireland because it has Celtic. The circle around the cross is from that area, and even the little balls represent the planets. There are a lot of interesting things on that. Yeah, and, that, and then there's one. Let's see, there's this one. This one, actually, any guesses where that one might have come from? Yeah, what, what do you think? Any ideas? Well, I don't think so, yeah. Well, it actually, this actually comes from Ireland, too. This is the story of somebody who told about how she created a cross like this to help somebody understand the story of Jesus. It kind of looks like a kid made it. You're exactly right. It looks really good, doesn't it? Because a kid made it. It does look very old, too. And then I've got one more. I bought this in a store recently. This is one. How is this different from the other ones? Yeah. There's a person on it. Who is it? Yeah. This is Jesus. When he died on the cross. You're exactly right. We are smart kids here. The idea of these, most of the time, in churches like ours, they don't put Jesus on the cross. However, we remember that Jesus did die on the cross to show us how much God loved us, but then, after his death, God gave him his life back. And for us, the cross is empty. And we remember that the final word is new life and resurrection. But we also remember how much Jesus loved us, that he gave his life on the cross. In just a few minutes, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we're going to remind ourselves that God loves us so much that Jesus gave his life. This is like when he got arrested. You're right. He got arrested put in jail, and then that, that's exactly he right. He does come back. Uh, he did come back with the resurrection, and we believe he's going to come again at the end of time. So that's great. Well, I hope you'll remember that. Can you bow your heads and let's say a prayer together? Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you that you show us in so many ways. Help us to remember the story of your love whenever we see a cross, and help us to share that love with each other. We pray this in your strong name. Amen. You can either go back to Children's Church with the folks in the back or return to your pew. It is like that cross, isn't it, too? Thanks for coming up. There are a couple of crosses around the room if you adults want to look for them, too. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Psalms, it comes from the 107th. We trust that the same spirit that helped this word be recorded originally and passed down to us through the generations will be with us this morning and help all of us understand it. Listen for God's word to us. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
This time I'd like to invite uh, Reverend Agamar de Souza to come read in Portuguese from Scripture and Young K. Kim to read from Korean. Louvai ao Senhor porque Ele é bom, porque a sua benignidade é para sempre. Digam-nos os remidos do Senhor, os que remiu da mão do inimigo, e os que congregou das terras do Oriente e do Ocidente, do Norte e do Sul. Andaram desgarrados pelo deserto, por caminhos solitários, não acharam cidade em que habitassem. Famintos e sedentos, a sua alma neles desfalecia, e clamaram ao Senhor na sua angústia, e ele os livrou das suas necessidades, e os levou por caminho direito, para ir à cidade que deviam habitar. Louvem ao Senhor pela sua bondade e pelas suas maravilhas, para com os filhos dos homens, pois fartou a alma sedenta e encheu de bens a alma faminta. Amém. Ora,하나님께서우리에게주신말씀은시편백칠편일절에서구절까지입니다여호와께감사라그는선하시며그인자하심이영원함이로다여호와께서대적의손에서그들을속량하사동서남북각지방에서부터모으셨도다그들이광
Every language I know of has nouns and verbs. Verbs, as I was taught, verbs are the action words, what somebody does. Uh, without verbs, there would be no action. We'd all be stuck not doing anything. But if you put a noun together with a verb in a sentence like gray preaches, you have a complete sentence. So over time, we, we learn to pay attention to verbs. A while back, I heard an Old Testament scholar suggest that the best way to understand a passage, like this passage from the psalm that we have just read this morning, may be to pay attention to the verbs. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to pay attention to the verbs in this psalm. Particularly in the passage that we have just read, the verbs are key to understanding not only what God did, but what the Old Testament people of God did, as well as what they are then commanded to do. I think it will also point to what we should do in response to what God has done in our lives and in our world on this World Communion Sunday. I want to invite us to look back at the passage we've just read. You may want to look at it in the bulletin. And first look at all of the verbs that describe what God has done. Together, these verbs tell a story. It begins with what God did in leading the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. And you can read about that in the book of Exodus. But the verbs also tell us how God continues to do these same kinds of things. Not only throughout history with the people of Israel, but even in our lives today. So, what are the verbs here that describe what God has done? It says that God has redeemed. God has gathered from the lands from east and west and north and south. Those are the same words we're going to be using later in our communion service that come out of our Gospels. But their origin is here in this psalm that we read this morning. It says God also delivered people from their distress. And God led them in a straight way to a city where they could settle and find a safe home. God satisfied their thirst and filled those who were hungry with good things. And it says that God loved them in a steadfast manner, which is what the word hesed means in Hebrew. It means steadfast love. And God's love is seen in these actions that some have called the mighty acts of God. So if we pay attention to these verbs, we see these actions of a loving God. But what about if we look at the verbs that describe what the Old Testament people of God did? Look at the verbs. It says what they did. They wandered in the desert wastelands and found no way on their own to a city where they could settle. In other words, they were lost and they were searching for a place they could call home. You may remember that in the book of Exodus, the people of Israel were in slavery to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. It says they cried out to God, and God heard their voices. And you remember God sent Moses to Pharaoh to tell him to let God's people go? A Pharaoh seemed reluctant to lose his slave economy. So um, God sent uh, ten plagues to try to convince Pharaoh to do otherwise. The last plague involves sending the angel of death over Egypt to take the life of everything that was first born. But the people of Israel were warned to place blood from an animal on a doorpost as a sign of their trust in God. And as the angel of death passed over Egypt that night, the firstborn of the Israelites were spared, but not the others. Finally, Pharaoh lets God's people go. Moses led them through the Red Sea and into the desert where they wandered for 40 years until God led them into the promised land, a safe place where they could settle. Along the way, they experienced hunger and thirst, and they cried out to God for help, and God heard their cry. And he not only delivered them out of Egypt, but God also provided bread or manna, in the wilderness, as well as water gushing from a rock, even some quail for them to eat. And this sustained them as they wandered prior to entering the promised land. 
It says they hungered, they thirsted, their lives ebbed away. They wandered in the desert, and then they cried out to God. And in response, God redeemed, gathered, delivered, led, satisfied, and filled them. And after they cried out, the psalmist tells them how they should respond. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And in, just in case we don't miss, just so we don't miss it, the psalmist says it again later. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for humankind. So when we look closely at these verbs, what do they what do they tell us about how to respond when we experience the steadfast love of God in our lives? What do we do? We give thanks. We give thanks. We give thanks not because God needs it. We give thanks because it is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. When someone does something for us and acts in a way that shows love, the normal human response should be to give thanks. Many times we do this, uh, giving thanks to God or to someone else who acts in this way toward us. But I wonder why we sometimes fail to give thanks. Sometimes I think it's because life is just so busy. And it just, for example, for me, it just slips my mind. It's not an excuse. But other times, I sense in myself a strange reluctance to give thanks. Sometimes there seems to be something that holds me back. Maybe you've experienced that too. From time to time, I detect in myself a reluctance to give thanks to someone. And, and maybe it's because I mistakenly think that if I express thanks to someone, I will somehow be beholden to them. Or I will owe them something by thanking them. I somehow put myself in their debt. So I just do nothing. I do nothing. And yet I believe that particularly in the Christian church, we should be people of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving should be a normal part of our relationships with each other. Whenever someone does something for us, what should naturally flow from us is this expression of thanksgiving, both to that person and to God for what they have done. And, and if we find ourselves resisting saying thank you, do it anyway. <laughs> do it anyway. Give thanks anyway. It will be good for you. It will be good for that person, and it will acknowledge how God is acting in our world. So it says the people of God wondered and cried out. It says they were commanded to give thanks. And finally, the psalmist says this, Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from the east, west, from north, and south. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. After giving thanks to God, it doesn't stop there. We need to share the story of God's love in our lives. We need to share that story of God's love in our lives. This morning, we have been sharing the story of God's love. God's steadfast love in the lives of God's people. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper in a few minutes, we retell the story of what happened when, when Jesus used this Passover story from the Old Testament to explain what Jesus will do, uh, what Jesus is about to do with his disciples, that he is the ultimate Lamb of God who would soon give his life on a cross to save the whole world. We tell that same story every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper, as we are doing today with Christians all around the world. On this World Communion Sunday, we tell the story. However, 
in addition to telling the story of God's love for the whole world as seen in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ, I believe we each have our own story to tell. The story of how God heard our cries as we were wandering lost in the desert of the world. Maybe for us it was a literal wandering in the desert as we were trying to find a safe place to call home. Maybe it was a symbolic desert in which we were wandering lost, trying to find purpose in life, or seeking something to satisfy and to fill the places in our lives of spiritual hunger and thirst. If you are a follower of Christ, then what is your story? How would you share that story with someone if, they, if somebody came up to you and said, why, why are you a follower of Jesus? I want to encourage you, if you've never done it, to take some time to think about how to share your story. To tell the story of how God has been at work in your life. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be dramatic unless that's your story. I found that Presbyterians are actually pretty good at telling the story of how God has been at work in their lives uh, if we, as Presbyterians, are asked the question in the right way. I know I've shared with you some of my story. I was raised in a Christian home with two loving Christian parents, and we were at the church every time the doors were opened. When I was about seven, we had a guest preacher for a revival which in our church meant that you had worship service every night for a whole week. Before the last night of the revival, I told my parents I wanted to become a Christian. I wanted to give my life to Christ. I wanted to go down front at the end of the service during the last hymn, and I wanted to later be baptized. So I did that. And over the years, I grew up in that church, and I remember my up and down and up and down spiritual life. This was particularly true in high school when we'd be very committed after summer youth camp and not so committed as the school year progressed. And when I went off to college, I spent three years wandering in my own spiritual desert, looking for answers in places other than my Christian faith. But at one point, I bottomed out spiritually between my third and fourth year. I found myself crying out to God to help me find my way back home. And graciously, God led me back. A few years later, after the death of a friend and a spiritual mentor, I felt the call to be a pastor. And since that time, I've been helping others try to, try to find their way home to God. That's my story. So what's your story? What's your story? And if you're not yet to the point that you have found your way home to God, this God who loves you, now would be a great time to cry out to God for help, knowing that God loves you and that God will help you find your way home. You see, we've all been lost wanderers at some point in our lives. We've all hungered and thirsted. And God offers to redeem to gather, to deliver, to lead, to satisfy, and to fill us. But it requires us admitting that we need God, which is the opposite of what we often hear in a culture that focuses on being totally self-sufficient, earning all that we get, and always having to pull ourselves up from our, with our own bootstraps. Certainly, there's something to be said for us doing all that we can, but <laughs> there are some things that only God can do. There are some things that only God can do. The good news is that God loves us with a steadfast love, and God always wants to help us find our way in life. So friends, call out to God when you need help. Give thanks to God when he answers and tell your story so that it can help others find their way home. In the strong name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray.
We thank you, gracious God, that you love us and you sent Jesus to help us find our way home to you. Help us to give thanks, to share your love with others, and to tell our story so that others may find their way home to you. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, hear these words from our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will find rest for your soul. As we have said, friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. It is written that they will come from east and west and north and south and set at table in God's kingdom. On World Communion Sunday, that's especially appropriate, that we come from all parts of the world to remember that we come to this table and we are one in Christ. According to Luke's gospel, when our risen Lord was at table, he took the bread and broke it. Their eyes were open and they recognized him. Friends, this is not just a Presbyterian table or John's Creek Presbyterian Church table. This is the table of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He invites baptized believers and their children to come share in this meal that he has prepared for us. So we take these ordinary elements, this bread and this cup, and we set it apart to a holy use and mystery. And as Jesus shared a prayer of thanksgiving with his disciples, let us pray. We call this prayer the great thanksgiving. We thank God for these gifts and all good gifts, especially Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you. Obrigado. Gamsa hamida. Gracias. God, you created the world full of beauty and abundance, and you formed us in your image, filling us with your breath of life so we might experience the joy of being in relationship with you and one another. When our love for you and one another falls short, and when our world is broken apart by mistrust and fear, you still love us. Through your prophets, you give us hope in the promise of a world that is united in love and service. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He came into the world at a particular time and particular place, but he shared news that is good and joyful for all people in all times and all places, the good news about your coming kingdom. He broke down barriers that keep people from knowing and loving each other. He reached out to all those who were cast out of society and proclaimed through his very life the extent of the kingdom as it is being revealed all over the earth. On the night before he gave himself up for us and for the world, He shared a final meal with his closest friends, the meal that we share now. And we remember Jesus. We remember his earnest prayer that we should all be one, united in love. We remember his promise to be with us always. And we remember that through the power of his resurrection, we are always being formed anew into his body with Christians around the world. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. And we proclaim the mystery of our faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this bread and this cup so that as we share them we may experience the power of Christ. Power to make us his body here in this community of faith and with others throughout the world. United in love, mission and ministry until the glorious day when all barriers will be broken and your love will reign in every heart. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, we pray this prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we celebrate communion, I just want to let you know, those of you who have not used these before, there are two different things to peel off. If you peel off the top, you get the wafer, and then the next one you peel off is the grape juice. We've also learned that the wafer does not fit in there as it is, so you will have to partake of them separately. Scripture tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, he took the bread and broke it, 
said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a similar manner after the supper, he took wine and poured it said, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink it, remember me. Friends, every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. This is the body and the blood of Christ broken for you. The bread of life and the cup of salvation. Would you join with me in prayer? Oh God, you have so greatly loved us with your steadfast love. You have long sought us and mercifully redeemed us. So God, give us grace that in everything we may yield ourselves, our wills, and our works as a continual thank offering, expressing our thanksgiving and gratitude to you. We pray this through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for the whole world. Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite our, our friends from the Casa Brazil to lead us in our closing hymn and invite you to stand if you are able.
first uh, begin by expressing my thanks to both uh, churches for not only being here with us, sharing your worship with us, your music, your, uh, your presence has been a real gift to us. So we are so grateful that we could do this together, and we look forward to doing it again. Um, your music is so good that I may lose uh, some of my folks to come down to your church to, uh, uh, to enjoy this too, but we are grateful for you being here. Let me say a, a couple of things before we end today. Um, I realize I've heard that the inserts for the elder nominations were not in the bulletin. They are as you leave on the right, so you can fill those out, take one home, and put in the offering plate. So uh, JCPC folks, that's to remind you of that. If you want to talk with uh, somebody from our church or their church about what it means to be a follower of Christ, uh, Brian and I will be in the back. We'd love to talk with you about what it means to be a follower of Christ or a part of our church family. If you want to talk with a Stephen minister, Chris Irwin is one of our Stephen ministers who's trained to listen, to care. She will be back by this exit and would be glad to go somewhere to listen, even to pray with you if you have that need this morning. We have worshiped today not only with three congregations, we've worshiped with Christians all around the world during this 24-hour period. Christians all around the world are coming together to remind us that no matter what our differences, uh, no matter what our music styles, no matter what language we speak, we are one in Christ. And that transcends uh, that. One of the reasons I think world communion is important, because this gives us practice for what heaven's going to be like. So uh, if you felt a little uncomfortable today, you need to get used to it. because <laughs> They're not all going to be Presbyterians like you or me in that place. We're going to have brothers and sisters from all different traditions, and we're going to spend a lot of time uh, enjoying each other and learning from each other, too. So this is great practice for heaven, and I hope you enjoyed a little taste of heaven this morning. As you leave this place, remember God's steadfast love. Remember to be thankful in your expressions to one another and to God, and remember to tell your story of God's love in your life so that others can find their way home. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Hope you have a great day.